Hey everybody, Roger here. I, I gotta hand it to you. I, I, you know, every time you think you hear the worst, uh, something else worse comes along. Um, I follow this guy named uh, Peter Sweden, or his handle is Peter Sweden on uh, Twitter. Posted a link to an article involving a man, um, a man by the name of Mortala Matu, Mortala Madu, or something like that. Um, Yippee ki yo kai do. I don't know. What Anyways, this guy, in a, in a, in a, in a public place, uh, and this was filmed, this guy in a public place, uh, I think at a train station or something, stabbed a baby in the back, a one-year-old infant in the back, proceeded to cut the baby's head off, decapitate the baby, um, and then stabbed the mother, where the mother later died in the hospital. So, what could make this worse, right? What could make this worse? There's two things that could make it worse. The first thing being, this was his daughter, and this was his, I think, his wife. And it was, a, it was referenced as an honor killing. The second thing is that Angela Merkel um, allowed this to happen, and is since she's, she's letting the media cover the mother's death, but she's doing whatever she can to censor um, the baby's death. Now, how is it news? How is it ever going to make an impact when something that important is controlled? I'm sorry, Germany, but you guys are getting cucked into being, uh, into being, uh, destroyed. You're, you're basically giving yourself your own personal, your own, uh, genocide. It's, um, and you're allowing it to happen all in the name of political correctness all in the name of um, basically just being cucks you know you're you're I don't know what it's gonna take to get you guys into seeing that that um, that you're destroying your own country the open borders policy that you guys have it's it's ridiculous um, and especially especially when the whole truth of everything is not even told to you guys there's really good people in every walk of life from every background there is but there's also the understanding there's you also have to understand reality here that there's going to be some bad seeds and some some backgrounds are worse than others you know again i'm using the phrase backgrounds because i don't want my video to be banned if i say the wrong words here so i think i know i think you guys understand where i'm going with this um you guys are allowing this this influx of 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 uh, migrants, I guess I would call them at this point, um, to overtake your country, to have heinous acts like this come around, and to allow your government to censor reporting, to censor the fact that this is actually something that's happening in your communities. It's happening once here. This is the one that we know that is covered. It's gonna happen multiple times thereafter. I know it, I know it. It is apparent. As the population of these people grow, the chances of this happening are more and more and more. Oh, and then they'll say, oh no, well, well, uh, you know, we can all be homogenous and, and uh, live together as a community. Well, I'm gonna kind of call BS on that because here I live in, I live in Phoenix and I commute daily between Phoenix, Scottsdale, uh, and occasionally Glendale. And I've lived here since the early 2000s. Now, since we've started having this policy of accepting a lot of foreigners, and a lot of them do come on on a, on with government benefits, uh, they do get the handouts. I've seen them in, in cash registers. I know who they are, uh, and I know what they buy. Call me um, a pre prejudging person, so, uh, but it's true. I can see it. So, these people are in the poor communities. I shop at some, uh, I shop at both. So I, I sometimes go into stores in in, uh, in Central Phoenix, like around the Thomas, Thomas area, uh, Thomas Street, and I would say between, uh, I would say between 60th, no, maybe 40th Street and 5th Avenue. 40th Street and 5th Avenue is pretty bad. And I go to some major department stores there at times. And when I go inside them and I walk around, I observe all the time, 24 seven I'm observing. I'm observing people, actions, situations, payment methods. And 
I see a lot of people there who are taking over jobs that regular Americans could have, and I know they're not citizens, and, uh, but yet when you come over to the Scottsdale area, you're not seeing that. There's a selective, and, and where I'm getting at is this, uh, the poor, and this goes back to a couple of my other videos, the poor communities are the ones that are being handed. These people who are gonna end up taking their jobs end up having the poor people become even more poor. You know? And and they don't see it. Some poor people just don't get just don't get it. Well, I don't see this in Scottsdale. Everybody in Scottsdale is um, they speak English, they speak fluent English, everybody is the I'm gonna have to say the majority because I don't know all statistics, but the majority of people that I'm around, they pay, you know, they pay with credit card cash or whatever. They don't pay with EBT, they don't pay with and that's the other thing. In in poor communities, what I'm also seeing signs of are EBT now accepted at fast food restaurants when you cross by in the windows EBT now accepted. Well, what does that tell you about your community? What does that tell you about your society? It means that if it's if it's going mainstream now and they know that the majority of people are paying with EBT, uh, that they're dependent on the government for these things, you're paying for it out of your working pocket. The it's becoming a trend where these these fast food places, these stores, they all know that hey, it's a market and we can profit off of it. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. These restaurants that never used to be taking this stuff, they are now. I don't know. You know, we're becoming a more dependent. We're becoming a, a country that is allowing more dependency and is costing us as hard workers. You know, it, it's, it's ridiculous. So I went off the, a little bit of a tangent there. I apologize, but um, this open borders thing, it, it, it's ridiculous. And um, the people of Germany, I mean, you guys, you guys really need to start getting your act together. The people in general, you're allowing this, this takeover. And again, this isn't about being Muslim. This is, this is about the actions of, of those that come in that are causing this. You know, my heart aches for the baby. My, my heart aches for, for the mother here. You know, it's, it's uh, and they're of a Muslim background as well. But then you have these extremists that, that, that believe in the old methods, that believe in the old way of thinking, that, that will consistently be there regardless. And, and we'll grow, and we'll grow. If you guys do not put a stop to the issues happening here. The other thing that happened here is this. There were a couple of people that were recording these, the, the, the scenario. One of them was a Christian singer. A Christian, I don't know the name of this person, but that person's house was raided for the content, for the footage. And you know what the reason the authorities gave as to why he was, this person was raided? Because they were protecting, protecting the, the, uh, the rights of the victim. I'm sorry, but the victim's rights were not protected when, um, when uh, this person uh, decided to commit a, um, a, uh, an, an honor killing on his baby. I don't, I, I don't fucking get this. I don't get this. And there's a perfect, and, 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 and I, I don't even know if Germany knows, like, altogether. I think some people in Germany obviously know this is going on, but I think with the censorship that you guys have over there, what the fuck is it with people wanting censorship? What, how is that even something you guys cannot fight against? I, I don't know. I don't know all the laws in Germany. I'm not a world historian, or, or, or I don't know the laws of, of Germany at all, so. Um, but how you can have someone like Angela Merkel act like this, put these rules on you guys, allow the open borders to, to keep happening, allow these people, I would assume unvetted at this point, unvetted people coming in, taking advantage of your systems, taking advantage of your people, all in the name of supposedly coexisting when it's not even that. You guys are refusing to see it for what it is. It is a passive, it's passive because you guys are allowing it, a passive form of genocide where you're having less babies, they're having more, it's gonna be the complete takeover of your country. I, I, and you guys might be saying, or some of you guys against me might be saying, oh, well, you know, you're, just, you're, um, you're totally against Muslims and whatnot. No, I am not. I, I have Muslim friends. Um, I understand, what is the word I'm looking for here? Extremism in regards to I understand how extremism can destroy 
a society. I think a, any general person can understand this. It doesn't take a historian, it doesn't take a history buff, it doesn't take uh, anybody in the, in the, in the know of um, what's going on in politics. You're fucking lying to yourself if you don't see this as the truth. You are. You are. And you know it. I don't know, man, but when you... There is... Okay, here's the thing. There is a video of this on LiveLeak. Uh, don't watch it. Don't watch it. And I think... I, I And I might be misquoting uh, Ben Shapiro on this. Ben Shapiro does not like to give names of serial killers uh, in America. I'm not sure if this extends out to bring in the names of terrorists like this. I don't think this guy wanted to get famous. I think this guy just did this out of an honor killing. It's his tradition. Um, and Ben Shapiro, not everybody does it for the fame. And I do believe that people's names should be reported because if you don't report the name, then German government will just, sit, they will just say a German citizen. They will not even say, they will not even point out the truth of this, per, of this person's background. Granted, they, granted they did in this case, which we're fortunate for because now we can get the full story. But you have to give names. You have to give backgrounds. And this is where, again, I agree. I disagree with Ben Shapiro. This is why I haven't been following him a lot lately. It's very, I'm a very, he's a very loose cannon for me uh, to get information from. Anyways, wow. What do you, uh, it's, it's, it's disgusting and sad. It's disgusting and sad. So what are you guys' thoughts? I'm not sure if you've heard of the story. It's being censored a lot in Germany. It's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's being censored a lot. I'm not even sure if, if this is going to make the rounds and in, in, uh, where I first read it on, on Twitter. I'm pretty sure maybe there may be some censorship here. What are you guys' thoughts? I mean, do you think that this should be, uh, that Germany needs to fucking balls up and, and, and start uh, defending their country and their sovereignty and, and, and their, their people? I see absolutely zero wrong with that, with that, with them needing to protect themselves. Whoops, sorry guys, I made a wrong turn. <laughs> um... Anyways, uh, it's very sad. I'm, I'm disgusted. Uh, they're nothing. Uh, I, I, I really don't know. And the people that are defending, like even abortions, there's a. There, oh my God! Speaking speaking of baby killers, there was a tweet today from a. Who's that one lady that made fun of Donald Trump um, and roasted a lot of people? Can't remember her name, uh, but she was making fun of. Um, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders in this, she was a comedian or whatever. Anyway, she has her own Netflix show and, and uh, she decided that she wanted to make a 4th of July special. And that 4th of July special, she was basically saying, you know, abortion is awesome and, and this and that. And uh, some person tweeted, oh, it's just refreshing to, you know, everybody's crit criticizing her for her opinion, but it's so refreshing to see this kind of a viewpoint. How is it refreshing? How is it how is it refreshing to discuss death? How is it refreshing for a woman to make a decision like that? I would I would assume that a high percentage of women who decide to have an abortion do not take the issue kindly. I, I, I would just that okay, that's me going against like what I normally think, but I, I do uh I don't believe anybody doesn't have a heart when a mother hears you know, when a mother is gonna have a baby, I, I you know, maybe maybe there are some women out there that, that that just don't care. You know, oh, let's just have the abortion, pull it out. I don't care. Um, I've read stories. I've I've heard um, testimonials from women who later say, even if it was a couple of weeks, um, that they regret it. Um, and there's some that don't. There's don't, don't get me wrong. It's always variables in between. But I don't think it's a decision that is to be taken as, um, yay for abortion. You know, the way she was cheering it on, like if it's a. Like it's something that's cool, and this guy tweeted later on, "Oh, it's it's refreshing to hear this kind of a viewpoint." Uh, nothing refreshing about a dead carcass. Nothing, absolutely nothing. So, anyways, uh, what are you guys' thoughts on this whole um, baby being decapitated? I I seriously am still in shock about it. I don't watch the video. Don't watch the video. Don't watch it. Don't watch it. Um, sad. Yeah, Germany, get your balls out of your ass. Peace out.